Hey guys, a little bit of a behind the scenes look at me prepping my materials for this upcoming video where we are creating accordion books. Um, I wanted to play around with different versions of zines. You guys know how much I like those and um, this is one way to approach it by making more of an accordion book. So I am cutting my paper into strips and I'll give you all the details here coming up but just wanted to show you um, a little bit of the prep work before we dive in. You probably saw in my little intro here, I cut three strips of paper. This is, um, let's see, it's six inches wide and I believe this paper is 19 inches long. It came from a paper pad. So we'll probably end up trimming some, but um, I just worked with the size of paper that I had. So um, I cut three strips and what's gonna end up happening is we're gonna connect all these together to make one long accordion. Um, but before I do even any of that, I just wanted to get some color and get a first layer on these pages um, so it can dry and uh, we can kind of begin to see it all coming together. Today I'm going to work with, um, I have a couple different paints, acrylic paint mainly. Um, I got some markers, some oil pastels, and then I think I'm going to do a little bit of collaging. I have a couple magazines here that um, I'm going to pull from. And I just realized I do not have, oh, yes I do. Okay, I have my scissors here, so I am all ready to go. All right, so in true fashion here, I am just gonna go for it and um, kind of see what happens. Now this paper, it's mixed media paper. Um, it's very smooth. So we will see kind of how it holds up um, to some of this paint. And like I said, I just want to get kind of like the first couple layers down here, let it dry, and then we're just going to keep building it up. Uh, you can see this paint is just nothing. It's just like craft paint <laughs> today. We're going to keep it a little simple. Spread things around. I like to either use like a palette like that or even just um, a towel. Out my Posca pens. And similar to my other zine videos, um, we're just getting the background down and then we'll kind of see how when we fold the pages where all these designs land. But I like the um, kind of not having the control of knowing where everything's going to be exactly. Um, for me, that is more fun and just allows me to just play a little more. Let's see. I hope everybody had a great weekend. It's been gorgeous out here in um, Asheville area. We went to a plant sale and um, just had a good time out and about in the mountains. Can't really complain about that. Here's a little bit of a paint booger, which I always think of my friend Vicki, if you're watching. She loves collecting these and incorporating them into her artwork, which I think is fun. So you see with not much, not much effort, you can start to see a piece coming together here. So I'm gonna put this on the floor and then dive into my next piece. So I'm just gonna start with some Sharpie markers. If you guys were able to catch my um, series that I did uh, last week where I just used a piece of paper and black sharpie marker. That's always a fun one to revisit if you ever would like to. And I will be, like I said, I will be going back and adding some more layers here. So yikes, that was a lot of paint. So I'm going to go ahead and 
All right, guys, I had to take a pause. Um, my camera ran out of space, which means I lost a little bit of my footage here, but we're just going to keep going with it. Um, and just filling in this side. I think right before it cut out, I was going to get some more different color paint, which I have done. Again, I'm just using pretty um, inexpensive craft paint here. What's good about that is it's pretty thin, which normally, you know, if you're working on a piece of um, artwork, you want really nice, um, luscious paint. But with it being thin, it actually works really well on paper. And as you can see, when I spread it around, um, all the colors underneath uh, poke out really nice. So there is a place for some cheapy kind of paint in your artwork. Don't be afraid of that. All right. Um. Alright, so I'm going to place that um, on the ground to let that side dry. This side is already nice and dry. Place that side all dry. Yep. So we will go to this side next. Nice thin layers, that's what I'm going for here. All right, I got that. And then this sheet is already, let's see. Yeah, we got both sides on that one. Okay, I'm gonna take one more minute to let that dry. And while we are waiting for those sheets to dry, I'm just gonna pull out some magazines. This was just a catalog. Uh, shout out to Marine Layer. But, um, I didn't want to throw it away. It came in the mail, you know, how things just kind of show up in your mailbox, which is always fun. Um, but they had a lot of nice textures and background images. So um, I just wanted to hang on to that. And what I do a lot of times is I'll just go through and if I see anything, any interesting um, colors, patterns, just go on into it and cut it out. You can either use scissors, you can just tear it. Sometimes this is a fun activity to do when you're just um, 
kind of in like a creative rut and you just like need to do something but you don't really want to think about it too much it's a great time to just pull out a magazine and um, cut some collage pieces You know, we store pieces like this in a, um, like a three ring binder or just like a little container just to, so you can come back to it. All right, let's skip over that. And then this one is from actually our realtor does a, um, nice, lovely magazine every now and then they send out and, um, very high quality, which I really, really like. Um, give a shout out to our realtor, Suzanne, for this one. Who puts, she's the one that puts this together. It's a great realtor in this area. Helped us find our home. Helped my parents find their home. One I'm just gonna tear. Just really nice images to come back to, whether I use it here in today's project or um, save it for later. Okay, so I'll start with that. I also have some other scrap paper over here. This lovely paper is from Portugal. We went to in February and absolutely fell in love with that country. I've said it before, but I do really love um, old patterns. Anything with like some just some vintage flair to it. Checking to make sure I'm not out of storage space again. That is no fun. Okay, so I'm gonna start with that little pile for now. It's out of the way. All right, now let me pull one of my sheets here. Great, okay. So I am really, I'm liking this design and the colors in it, so I don't, feel the need to do too much um, collaging on top of it, but I am still going to add some just to give it an extra little um, little bits of intrigue. So I'm using that Nori glue that I use a lot here. You can certainly use anything, um, PVA glue, uh, gel medium would work. But since this is going to be a folded book, you want to make sure um, everything that you do put down is pretty nice and secure and lays fairly flat. I haven't done too much just like collage work on my videos, so I will, I'm gonna wanna be doing that more this summer with you guys. And in this um, case, I am, it's okay if your paper um, goes over the edge because you can just fold it to the other side and it actually probably be pretty cool. Actually do it, let me do it like this, I think. So just fold it on, on over. As long as you get a nice flat fold there, it should be good. else do I got here?
the same thing on this side. Get nice and flat and then fold it over. this side of it. Other thing, I mentioned this earlier in terms of leaving comments and stuff, but feel free to introduce yourself too. I've met some really great people in the last couple months just from you guys chiming in and introducing yourself, sharing your work a little bit. And if there's any ever, if there's ever any videos that um, you would like to see, uh, just let me know. have a little bit of a, a list of videos I know I'm going to want to do over the summer, but always happy, happy to hear suggestions. Now, when you're putting down your paper, just know that you're going to be able to go back and um, add more details later. So even though some of this looks kind of just like random and not really incorporate it well to the piece, I know that I am, once I get this folded, and I kind of see where everything is landing, I can go back over and add some more layers. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that one like that. Pretty simple, not much collage work there at all. But let's jump back to this one. I feel like this one needs some flower going on. Flowers, submit. the colors kind of match. Take your time with this too. Let this just be a time where you can enjoy the process, not worry so much about how the final outcome is gonna come out because we really don't know how it's gonna come out. So just enjoy being in the present moment and just working with what's in front of you now. you're looking for a little bit of um, encouragement this summer to keep up with your creativity and just some ideas of different projects you can use to kind of spur some information or inspiration, I'm sorry, and such, um, I am going to be doing a two-week email series where I'll be sending videos and different resources um, out for two weeks uh, through your email address. Um, so you can sign up there. I, uh, I will include a link with that information as well. This is gonna be a wild outcome. I don't quite know what to expect here. But that's what makes it exciting. All right, I think I'm gonna leave this one, this side relatively open. Last one. Put a bit of a longer strip in there. I don't know since I ran out of storage space and a couple minutes got cut off, cut off. I don't know if um, my mention of, you know, following my channel here, if that feels good for you, go ahead and do that now.
might have gotten cut off since I had to free up some storage space, but um, if you haven't already, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel to see similar videos and some newer videos this summer. I feel like I want to fill this in with some yellow. Um, that one's almost out of ink. You know what? Let's just I'm gonna add a dab of this. see that I am often just kind of random with my artwork here so bear with me because I just kind of I see something and I'm feeling something and I need to just do that okay site two let's get some of that chartreuse on and then I might not do any collage on this page knowing that I can always go back and add some more later. Whoa, it's a bit too much. I'm gonna roll with it here. Go back to one of my other pieces. Okay, a little bit. So I have so much extra here. All right, so I'm gonna let all this dry. Once again, it should just take a couple minutes. Next, we're gonna start getting to folding these sheets. So I'm gonna clear out some space here on my little desk that I have to work with. It gets a little bit tight from time to time, but. Okay. So I know I want these pages to be four by six inches um, and I'm going to grab one of my covers that I started with um, because I know this is four by six. So um, what I'm going to do is kind of just lay that on there. Now you could, of course, go through this with a pencil. I might for this first fold, I'm just going to make a couple little marks so I know um, exactly where to start off. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fold the paper on that. And those marks there. And I pulled out my um, bone folder. There it is. So I can get a nice crease here. And this, you'll see, this is another reason why we wanna, we didn't wanna add too much texture to these pages because you're really gonna be creasing them and um, it's nice to get it nice and smooth there. So here we go. So then I'll flip the whole thing over and go back the other way and just line it up with the fold to stick with the four by six size. There we go. Back again. And again. So of course you can make this any size you would like. Make it smaller, larger. Whatever you'd like. And then at this last fold, this page isn't quite um, the four inches apart, but that's okay because we're gonna use that to adhere to the next page. So I'm gonna set that aside and do this do the same thing with our next paper. Just gonna grab this again. And depending how precise you're trying to be here, I mean, we wanna be pretty pre precise, but we can always go back and um, trim things down a little bit too. I mean, you guys know that most of my work here is just very, um, lighthearted. We're not looking for perfection here. I think part of creativity and, and feeling comfortable with it and kind of just owning it is going into things with confidence and being brave about, you know, what you're doing, knowing that you might make a mistake along the way, but we can always fix it. We can take another path. So when you have that mindset, you really can't 
lose with anything. Um, in terms of your creativity, you just you just go with the flow. And it, it tell you, it just really opens up your world when you can get that mindset of not being so afraid or being afraid, but proceeding anyways. Whether your artwork or your job, your career, your hobbies, just go for it. Okay, so there's a second one. And then third one here. I'm going to start on this end for this one. Pencil here. And I know I mentioned it, but I'm not sure if it got um, cut off in the video, but all of the materials that I'm using here will be linked below along with other just collage and mixed media items that I love to use. So you can have access to all of those. Um, another reason I didn't want to use too much oil pastel is they do rub quite a bit. So um, keep that in mind. I probably should not have put them on um, this application just because it, it just does smear and just makes things a little messy. Okay. There we go. So we have some nice creases. Um, all right. So now we have three books, accordion books here. And I am just going to start to um, kind of figure out how we're going to connect them here. What I'll probably do to keep the four by six size, since this length is pretty long, um, I will just attach it like this and then we'll glue it or tape it. And then that'll just act like another um, four by six page. It might cause us to rotate the flaps the other way, but we're just going to go with it and see what happens. So let me get this out again just to make sure my sizing. I'm just going to slip this one right up there until it hits the edge of this, knowing that, that that's four by six. But I think for today, actually, maybe I'll use a little bit of both. I'll just use some washi tape as well as a little bit of glue um, to make sure these pages stay together. So let me just add this. I just grabbed some PVA glue. It's just a little more fluid than the Nori glue. Ooh. But I will use the same brush, I think. So I'm just adding a thin layer of PVA glue just to get the pages to stick a bit. Set this on here. Again, get my four by six. Sizing. Okay. Push that down. Gotta love some good washi tape, huh? Not always the stickiest, so let's just see how this adheres. It's actually looking pretty good. And then if you want to check it on the back too, because we're going to have this flap right here where we attached it. So with that one, I might grab some Grab some masking tape for this one side of it. I, I like masking tape um, again because it kind of see what's going on underneath a little bit, but yet it's still strong enough to hold. Almost blends right in there, actually. Cool. All right, so just attach our first one. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to need to fold this the other way. It's fine because we already have our creases. Cool. So here we go. 
And then if we want to add this last one, same idea. Let's see, I'm trying to decide which cover I'm going to go with here. Let's see, we want it to open this way. Maybe I'll keep that. And we're going to go. that. Cool. Okay. I feel like it's Monday and I am just <laughs> a little extra slow today. Now, you know what? I think I'm actually, I like this side better and I, I kind of want to cover up my oil pastel there. So I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna stick it on this side. Yeah. Um, go. So we know it needs to be about right there. Okay. Put some glue down. One more check of my sizing here. There. Yeah, just here. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna use another piece of this. Okay, and then the same thing I did it with the other one on the back. I'm going to add a strip too, just to make sure that's nice and secure. And then with the glue in there too, that'll give us a little extra assurance that it's going to stick nicely. Cool. All right, so go back this way. All right, guys, I think we got it. Let me open this up for you. Now we got a nice long accordion book. And not only that, we have it on the other side too. How fun is that? So you can kind of choose which side you want on which, you know, which colors you want on um, which side. And then I did mention earlier that, you know, you can go back through and add little details, which I think I might take some time and do that now. This right here is a little wet still. So I think what I will do is let this um, sit for just a minute, um, get a little more air so everything's dry, let that glue dry, and then I'll come back and add a little bit more details. All right, now we're gonna do the fun part and add um, some details. The good news is we already have a really great foundation, both sides, um, and now we just get to add some fun details. So um, I pulled out a couple extra materials I have some more Poscas, including uh, some metallic ones, silver and gold, and then some of my um, highlighter pencils, which I really like. They're like regular colored pencils, but they are a little more fluorescent. Um, and then we're just gonna go with it here. I, I pulled the camera in a little closer, so hopefully you can see some of the details. Um, and then let's just, let's just get going. So I'm trying to think how this will open up, I guess do it like that. Whoa, looks like my Posca had a little ink explosion down here, which is okay. I just might need to give that a minute to dry. And these journals, are great for um, when you just need some time to just doodle, just add some details, um, kind of that mindless work. Um, I know when I used to work at an office and I was pretty unhappy with my job um, and just bored out of my mind a lot, but um, having something like this that I could have pulled out like in between meetings or just maybe even during my lunch break or whatever, would have been really, really nice. Um, 
Because you can just, I mean, the sky's the limit. You can just keep adding details. Um, kind of like, you know, an adult coloring book where um, you can just keep going and going. And it's just, it's just fun. Get your mind off things. So I'm just going to add some details. And see how bright these pencils can get. It's really nice. All right, since I had this little ink explosion, um, I have two choices. I could just either leave it here to dry or I can kind of rub it and hope it dries, which I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rub it, see what happens here. There we go. Okay, not so bad. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm telling you, this has just not been my day to make videos. <sighs> Everything I'm doing, something goes wrong today. But we're just going to push through and just let it be. We're just going to blend it in. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Have you ever had those days where? You think you have like one simple task and man, it just turns into this um, just difficulties. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. The good news is this is just art and we're just having fun here. And we can totally make anything work. So let's just keep going. All right. I'll come back to that page. Let's move on. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And this pen, this ink is deciding not to work on me. Yay. All right, here we go. And now I will decide later if I'm going to go back and add any words to this. Um, with some of my previous zine videos, I... Um, typed out some text for my words and then um, cut them to pieces and then um, just glued them right in, which is probably what I would do here. But I don't know. I might just keep it like a fun, um, kind of just like an art journal, maybe, maybe like a summertime art journal where I can just keep adding little details depending on which pen is working that day. Just really have fun here. Just, you know, experiment. That's what this is all about. Um, afraid to use that one. So I'm going to set that aside. <clears throat> See how my Sharpie's doing. Sometimes I keep a, just so you know what I'm doing, I have a little scrap piece of paper over here so I can kind of test out my ink situation before I commit it to the page. So, let's put this on there. Okay. Now I could totally just, instead of working this way, I could just totally open this up and just work like a little assembly line here. Just keep going and going and going. Now, this is a very, very busy book, I would say. I mean, I'm doing a lot of different techniques and lines and that kind of thing. And for this application, I am very okay with that. All right. Keep moving along here. This is just a regular hider, highlighter marker that I'm using.
Anytime I see like a dull color and I really want that to pop, I did it here too. Um, I used my orange highlighter on top of kind of this dull rusty color and I did it here with the green too. It just, just bumps it up a little bit. Um, then I also have, I pulled some of my, um, these are just little transfer sticker kind of things um, with number, numbers on them. So I'm just gonna play with that for a sec. Um, just use this three at the end here. As you like to cut these out, and then you just really peel it back, place it where you want. And I said earlier, I think I did, unless my video got cut out, that if you are doing collage pieces and instead of it kind of just looking random, like there's a random piece of a magazine clipping, there's things you can do to make it look more incorporated. And one is just to add some doodles around it, um, add some colors on top of it. And then another is just to um, do something like this where the sticker is off off of the collage piece as well as on. So it just kind of pulls it all in, if that makes sense. Makes it all feel like one, more cohesive. So just gonna rub this on. These, um, Actually, I just got it at the dollar store, so they are extremely affordable. There we go. Okay. And then I might even, let's see, where's my, where's this one? Just bring some color into it. There we go. Okay. Oh, things are rolling around. This is just, I am just gonna mark this as one of those days. It's fine, everything is fine. Okay. What do I want to do here? Pull this out again. This has been kind of a nice common thread throughout, just this pink marker. This one last section here. Grab this pink again. Again, I'm gonna, I see these green circles here, so I'm just gonna hit that with a little bit of the highlighter green. I don't know if you can see it too much on the camera, but it does add a little, makes it pop a little bit. And I encourage you to always pay attention to the edge of your sheets. Sometimes those get left out. So don't be afraid to bring the color all the way around there. Get up, get up on that edge. Just bring that. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna fold it back together. It's getting a little heavy. Cool. All right, so I have this side. Had some details. And let's hit this side real quick. Here's another example of just a collage piece that it just kind of looks like it's sitting there. So I want to um, just kind of make some marks on top of it. 
blend it in a little bit. And now it looks like more of a background piece versus just sitting on top um, with nothing to do. Looks like it belongs. Here's another piece of collage that's just kind of sitting there. It looks a little bit, um, just kind of separate it from all the pieces. So um, let's see, let me grab my other Posca pen. can find it. Pretty sure I had it. Okay, so we're just going to blend that in a little bit. Adding some color on top of it. Okay. Just moving along. So here's a little bit of a contrast where it's super bright and then it looks a little more white here. Let's see if we can kind of blend that in. And it's okay to have spaces of white. Um, it's not a problem at all. I just want this to look a little more cohesive. So again, you can really spend a lot of time doing this. I think, I mean, it's really endless that you could just keep filling this page. Just enjoy the process of it all. Okay, let's move it over a bit. Use that same pencil on top of here. <clears throat> that mark a little bit. There we go. are making a lovely mess here in the best possible way. And another reminder, just if you guys are enjoying these videos, um, 
please subscribe and follow along with me. Leave a comment. Um, I always like connecting with you all, learning about you and your creative work and your process. Okay. I just saw that this is sticking up a little bit and I certainly could glue that down, but I also have my handy dandy washi tape right here. So I might just have that and let's do it. Not so straight up and down. We'll do it on an angle like that. Cool. All right. So let's fold that side back up. Wow. Okay. So it's really come together. And remember that cover that was a little crazy that we started with here. Um, it's actually not so bad. I think it's, um, I think I'm liking it a little bit better than I did initially. Um, you can always uh, collage on top of this. Um, if you feel like it's just feeling a little muddled, I would really like to get my, I'm gonna grab my large black pasta and just kind of blend this in just a little bit. There we go. Cool, I love it, okay. So now an exercise, I mean, you could, like I said earlier, you could just, you could keep going back and forth. All right. All right, so I think it's actually all coming together. Um, like I said, you can just keep adding layers and layers and layers if you want it to. Uh, the sky is the limit. The main goal here is to have fun, make something really cool, and just enjoy it. Going back with just a little bit of this thicker marker in certain places, just kind of random. All right, I think I'm gonna leave it at that. And so here's my finalized book. All right, guys, so you can, of course, just leave it as this, as it is. Um, it's a great accordion book. I'm gonna take it one step further today and add a, a front and a back cover. So I just pulled out um, two pieces of chipboard. Um, these are linked in my um, in the link below my video here. Um, and we're just gonna add these to the front and then to the back, and that'll create just a little bit of a sturdy cover. And it'll look really cool. So, all right, so what I'm gonna do is just collage on top of this so it kind of blends into the inside. And then we will adhere it on and we'll be all set to go. So just like the inside, I'm just gonna kind of go at it. I'm putting these two together just to kind of make one piece. I'll get a little bit of paint on here as well. Just getting a little base layer going. Let's see here. Same principle as before where I'm just gonna put pretty thin layers. And since this chipboard is brown, of course, it's going to um, take on the paint in a little bit of a different way, which is okay. Let's get some collage pieces down, pull out my glue. Again. I use this chipboard in quite a lot of my videos that I create here. It's, um, it's affordable, it's nice and thick. I'm gonna go a little over the edge here and just fold that back. 
Um, it's nice and thick, so it can take on some good collage work. I just, I love it. I stock up every chance I get. Because it's just, I mean, you can use it in so many different applications. So same thing, I'm going to fold it over there. A little extra glue on the back here. Fold it nice and crisp. You know what? I'm just going to fold, or I'm just going to glue this whole piece down. This piece is just from a... Um, I believe it's from just a scrapbooking book that I tore out some pages. Oh, well, I am hopeful <laughs> that you guys have hung with me through this journey. It's been, um, like I said, it's been quite the day of hitting a couple roadblocks along the way. So if you're still here, congratulations and thank you. She's stuck by my side here. I'm a little bit over here, so I'm just gonna trim that. You don't really need too much collage paper to um, create a really nice layered background look. my Portugal paper that um, we got when my family went to Portugal in February. It's always, you always try to get like little souvenirs, but things that aren't gonna take up too much space in your suitcase. And I had, when I, when we went in February, I had it on my mind that my next zine subscription was going out in April. So I wanted to get something for all my subscribers from Portugal. So I ended up getting um, um, some different types of paper and was very well received. All right. And I actually like the kind of the brown craft look here poking through. So I don't, I don't feel I need to um, completely cover that up at all. I have to get my daughter to sharpen these pencils for me. She loves sharpening pencils. <laughs> so, um, I'll have to bring them into her room when I'm done here. She can sharpen them. All right, just gonna add a couple details here. Okay, anything else I wanna add? Get a I think I might just leave it like that. I don't want to go overboard here. Knowing how the day is going, I think it's best to just leave things simple. So I'm going to leave it like that. Pull out my book again. Um, I don't remember if I mentioned this, but I did cut these a little larger. These are This is four by six. So this is about four and a half by six and a half. All right, here we go. So what I will do, I'm going to, I think I'm going to attach it to the 
edge like this. So I'm gonna get my blue. Goodbye, pretty page. Spread out thin layer on there, all the edges. I'm just gonna stick, or, stick it on knowing that I can kind of move it around once it's on there. So I'm not too worried about it. Making it perfect. And then what I will do is grab just a couple clips here. There we go. Now, something I just thought of, which I want to do real quick, is um, I noticed how nicely this looks and how it kind of pokes through the outside of my journal. So real quick, I'm going to unglue it. Mm. And then I'm gonna just put a black border around it because I think that'll look really cleaned up. And dare I say professional. <laughs> Let me just get some black on each line. Um, I also could have just taken a like a black piece of paper here and glued it to the inside cover. Probably would have been the better way to do it, but. like see how that looks stick it on again see some things you just kind of figure out as you go here yeah there we go see how nice that looks okay okay and then I'm just gonna like I said attach it with some clips here hold that down do one more I guess all that's drying let's flip it over and do the back so same idea here let me add my black professional markings here before I attempt to glue it my mom is actually a really good bookmaker and I'm excited to spend some time in her studio this summer, this summer, learning some techniques. She always has some fun stuff going on. Okay, beautiful. Same thing. Get a layer down. Um, you really could use any glue here. It doesn't have to be like an art based glue. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing where I'm just kind of eyeballing it here and then I'll adjust it. Just want to make sure it's fairly lined up with that top one. Open it up. It's a little not totally centered, but I am very okay with that. Cool. Okay, and then same thing, I would clip the outside for a little while just to make sure it's nice and stuck on there. Let me grab one more clip. Actually. Clips. These clips have become our new favorite thing for people that move into a new house. Or housewarming gift because they can be used in so many different ways. We just get them a bulk box of them and it usually goes over pretty well because like I said you can just use them for so many different things. Okay cool. All right so I'm gonna let this dry. Um, I could even put a weight on it just to make sure that glue is extra secure and then I will come back and do one final viewing <laughs> of our accordion book, but it's looking really fun right now, guys. All right, so I wanna show you the final piece. We got the um, cover nice and secure. And when you page through it inside, it's just super vibrant and colorful. You can see how putting that black around the inside cover just allowed the inside to pop even more and just feel a little more professional. Um, so see the inside there and then you can flip it and see the other side. 
we open it up. Super fun. This is a great piece, um, like I talked about, for um, you can add some text on top. You can continue to add details. You could pop a couple pictures in here, which would look really cool, and give it away as a gift. Um, there's so many possibilities, and um, I would be excited to hear about your journals because I know everyone has a different style and a little bit of an artistic um, voice that they want to share, and I would love to see how that comes out on your end. So I hope you guys like this one. Sorry, it was a little bit of a rough video given um, it's just one of those days, like, like I said earlier. Um, but we got it together and got a beautiful piece of work out of it. And I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a wonderful week and talk to you guys soon. Bye.